Hello, I'm Keith, the Senior Service Technician for Milton Cat. Thanks for buying Caterpillar and for taking the time to learn about good service practices and preventive maintenance habits. This short video will help you get going with your new cat machine, teach you a bit about maximizing performance and how to avoid unnecessary downtime and repairs. We'll start with a machine walk around focused on safety, maintenance and preventive measures, then move to the cab and familiarize you with all the features and controls of the D-Series. So let's get going. We're gonna start on the right-hand side of the machine. A hydraulic fill is right here on the right-hand side of the machine, 10 weight hydraulic oil. The hydraulic gauge is right to the left of the fill cap. When you check the hydraulic oil, loader arms down, bucket flat on the ground. The fill mark is in the middle of the gauge, which is marked clearly in green. Overfilled is the red to the right, underfilled is to the left of the red. Grease points, every pin on the machine has a grease fitting. One pump of grease per day, no need to over grease. If you feel more is necessary, if you're working more than one shift, could be two applications per day if needed. Tires, there's options. We have solid tires that came on this machine. You can use solid tires, pneumatic tires. Pneumatic tires, 45 PSI, all the way around for stability of the machine and better drive traction straight control. The lug nuts on this tire use a one inch socket or a 24 millimeter socket. It's a good idea to keep a spare tire and rim if you're using pneumatic tires. Solid tires, not an issue. We do offer a lift group for these machines, single point or a four point. We only advise that you use the design lifting group for the machine. Don't try to rig the machine any other way for safety purposes. It's available in our parts departments throughout the territory. It can be installed through the dealer or the customer himself. So that finishes up the right side of the machine. We're gonna now move to the front of the machine. At the front of the machine, we're gonna cover three topics. Auxiliary couplers, our work tool coupler, either manual or electric, and our ground engaging tools on our bucket or attachments. Starting out with our auxiliary quick couplers, this is a standard flow machine. We also have high flow machines. On the D-series, these are a new quick release coupler. We still advise you release the pressure on your attachment before you take it off in a case where it's forgotten. The new pressure style release is a push-in coupler, which releases the pressure from the attachment through the hydraulic system back into the machine. We advise not renting attachments that do not be filtered before they return out on another rental. The reason for that is, is cross-contamination. You have a machine that was using the attachment prior to you using it that has a hydraulic problem. You can take cross-contamination from the attachment into your machine. Moving on to the quick coupler. This is equipped with a standard coupler, which is a manual coupler, or there's an option over an electric quick coupler. Manual levers should be used to unlock by hand. No need of putting a pipe or any other kind of tool on. There is a grease fitting at the base of each pin for your bucket lock, which you can put down with ease, unlock, or on your electric coupler, lock and unlock. Now moving on to our ground engaging tools on our bucket. This is equipped with a regular bolt on cutting edge. Cutting edge has two sides. When your cutting edge is starting to get worn down towards the base edge, it's time to flip the edge. I suggest on your daily inspection walk around, check your cutting edge bolts. Just a light tap with your foot. If there's a loose bolt, you're gonna pick up on it, you can torque it or replace it. Now on the left-hand side of the machine, we're gonna cover three topics. Grease fittings, the same as the right-hand side of the machine, loader arm safety brace, and outside cab air filter. Grease fittings, same as the right-hand side, one pump per fitting. If you need more, of course, you can do an extra pump if needed. You don't want excessive grease. Two grease fittings you don't want to miss. Your lower grease fittings on the left and the right-hand side at the base of your loader arms. Loader arm safety brace is equipped on all of our Caterpillar skid steers. Before ever going underneath the loader arms, always remove whatever attachments on the machine first. Before lifting the loader arms, remove your locking pin. You then can go inside of the cab Start your machine, raise your loader arms. The safety brace will fall into place in the lock position on your cylinder. You can then come out of the cab and just install your lock pin. Now that our attachment's off, our loader arms are in the air, brace is installed. We can access our outer cab filter. The D-Series has a pressurized cab with an inner and outer filter. Service interval on your cab filters are 250 hours. 
under extreme conditions in a dusty environment, if you feel any kind of restriction in your airflow or your cab, attachment off, safety braces engaged, one quick release lever, release down, lift up on your cab cover, filters out, accessible. If you hold it up to the light with a visual inspection, you can see through it, it's reusable, reinstall, cover back on, two little tangs slide right into place, flip your lock over, outside cab air filter, job complete. Okay, now we're going to enter our engine compartment. We're going to open our door by the clearly marked latch that's cut out, access cover, open up our door. Anytime we go into the engine compartment, we want to install our safety pin to secure the door in the open position. So if it ever closed while we're inside, lock into place, our door is secured open. On the D-Series machine, uh, fuel fill is in the rear of the machine. Clearly marked with the green cap is all you always had. Ultra low sulfur fuel only. Ultra low sulfur engine oil only. Dipstick, right to the left hand side. Check your oil, engine oil level when the engine is cold. Two marks on a dipstick. Lower circles, low engine oil. Upper circles, your full engine mark. On the fuel subject, We've had problems with fuel contamination in machines, low power complaints. Problems is contractors, landscapers have tanks in the back of the trucks. They don't have inline filters or they don't change the filters in them. On our new tier four engines, clean fuel is a priority. Change the filters. If they don't have a filter, install an inline filter. Fuel filter is a clear. So you can see inside of your filter for any kind of foreign debris or anything that's being entered into the machine through contamination. 250 hour service, remove your filter, replace, reinstall. Above our fuel filter is our overflow bottle for our coolant. Clearly marked full cold, full hot, it's on our full cold mark. The only time you ever check your coolant level or add your coolant is when it is cold. To access our cooler pack, rubber latch on our cooler pack, open up our pack, make sure our cooler pack is clean and free of any debris. The fill is up in the top left hand corner rag over it, crack your cap open, let the pressure out, open it to fill, reinstall your cap, close your cooler pack down, gauge your latch, cooler pack is secure. This is our air conditioning condenser. Any kind of restriction in a condenser is going to restrict the flow of air inside of your cab. You want to make sure your condenser is clean, you can see right through it for debris. If there was any kind of debris that was clogging the condenser, it's going to restrict our airflow for our air conditioning inside of the cab. If it needs to be cleaned, low pressure air, blow out your condenser over the garden hose with low water pressure. Below our condenser is our backup alarm. Backup alarms always in the past were hardwired. We now have a two pin Deutsch connector which is installed on which we can disconnect our backup alarm for early morning loading or unloading. Once it's been loaded in an early morning situation, reconnect, it's back in business. Our battery is on the lower left hand side. We have our positive is our red cable. Black is our negative, regular service intervals. We want to check and make sure there's no corrosion. Our terminals are clean. V-belts, this is our V-belt cover. We have an alternator belt and we have our air conditioner belt. Now we're just going to remove our V-belt cover to inspect our belt tension. About five screws. Now our V-belt cover is off. We're going to check our belt tension. Lower belt is our air conditioner belt. Nice and tight if needed to be adjusted. A bolt on our slotted bracket, loosen our bolt, install pry bar, tighten our bolt up, our V-belt's nice and tight. Alternator belt, also nice and tight if needed to be adjusted. Our slotted bracket, loosen the bolt, install our pry bar, torque down so our belt's tight, retighten our bolt, our belts are tight, we can reinstall our cover. Once the cover's reinstalled, when we pre-deliver these machines in the shop, we put a little white mark on the cover one on the hose, which you can notice, a little white mark, one up on top of the zip tie. When realigning your cover back onto the engine, you line your dots up, there's no guesswork on where your screw is going to go inside of the bracket. Clip them in nice and easy, all done. Now we're through in our engine compartment besides our engine air filter. These are engine air filters located under this cover. We have a primary and a secondary filter. Should be serviced at 250 hours on our primary, 500 on our secondary. When servicing our engine air filters, Real easy to remove your cover. You can notice your dust. Duck cover can be open to clean any dust or debris that builds out inside. To remove our cover, pop our three clips, 
remove our air filter cover. We have our primary engineer filter and our secondary engineer filter. The machine is equipped with an air alert indicator inside of the cab. We don't suggest blowing air filters out. Some people like to blow filters out and they blow from the outside or even from the inside out, which can create a hole and make a path of dirt to introduce into our engine intake system. There's no need of changing the filter until your service intervals or if an alert indicator ever came on under extreme conditions. We're going to reinstall our filter. Go to put our cover on. Dust valve, you want to have straight up and down. Pop our three tanks back onto place. Service on our engineer filters is complete. Now that we're done in our engine compartment, we're going to remove our safety pin, reinstall in the door, shut our rear door, and we're going to move into our operation station. Now we're in the cab, in the seat. First things first, seat belt. Always on before operating the machine. On the seat, right in the front, this machine is equipped with a heated seat. On, off, seat adjustment, lower left hand side, lift up, you can slide your seat forward or back for adjustment where it's in comfort. Armrest control bars, up position, the machine hydraulics would not be functionable. Lower your armrest bars down, they're engaged into place. Two levers on right below your armrest are for adjustment of your consoles for your joysticks. Pull up your levers, you can slide your control levers forward or back. They're fully adjustable. Joysticks, left hand joystick is going to be for your drive. Bring your joystick rearward is reverse, forward, left, right, neutrals in the stop position. Four buttons on your left joystick. Top upper button is your horn. Lower button is for creeper control. Creeper control is for the speed of your drive when you're utilizing an attachment. When you're going at full engine RPM, you can go from a speed from 1 to 20 on the D-Series machine. The speed of your machine, you make a nice productive cut and you're not stalling the attachment. Two inside buttons are going to be two power wires on the end of your work tool electrical kit on the end of your loader arms. If you had an angle broom on, that would be powering up your solenoids to go from left to right on your angle broom or any other attachment. Right control is for your loader arm functions. Pull your lever back, raise your loader arms, forward lowers your loader arms, curl out to the right dumps your bucket, left curls your bucket up. The roller in the middle is for your auxiliary hydraulics. It's called pulse with modulation. The faster you roll the roller in either direction, the faster your flow is going to be. Moving off our controls to our glass, side glass, our windows, quick latch, front and rear windows open and close. New with the D-Series machine, it's an anti-vibration. Sometimes we've had complaints in the past that the glass and vibration went eroding. This latch, you lock down in place, the glass is solid. It's a pressurized cab, you don't hear any sounds. The problem is we had phone calls, I can't open my windows. Release. The vibration lock, slide your window right open. We're going to go from our windows, move up to our upper consoles, left hand controls, key switch for your ignition, above it is your parking brake switch, windshield wiper, heater air conditioning controls. On your heater air conditioning you have three speeds on your fan, middle is your compressor switch for your air conditioner, on or off, dome light in the cab, Auto level switch. Auto level, when the light is on, is when you raise your loader arms, your bucket or your attachment will automatically level itself going up and coming down. Mirror for your backup is adjustable right in the center of the cab, or is an option, we do have a backup alarm that is available in the kit to go into the D-Series machine. Moving over to the right hand side, we have our advanced display, which has our hour meter, fuel gauge, and touchpad which you could have a security system code put into your machine through the factory only dealer installed. You have your headlights, front and rear work light switches, and your constant flow switch. In the past, where our creeper control switches on the bottom left joystick is now creeper control, our constant flow switches on the top right hand panel. Depress and hold your constant flow so your green light appears on your advanced display or basic display. When you roll your roller, Wait till the light becomes solid, 
your broom would stay running without holding your roller. To disengage your roller, either hit the roller or hit the constant flow switch will stop your attachment. We now on the D-Series machine have an accelerator decelerator. In the past, we only had an accelerator pedal. Now, with your position on your dial control, there's a turtle and a rabbit. When you're on the turtle, your throttle pedal works as an accelerator. Turn your dial all the way to the rabbit, your pedal becomes a decelerator. Push down on the pedal, you lower your RPMs, let off, you go to full throttle. I'm going to talk about phone calls that we get. People will call up saying they have no hydraulics in their machine. First question that I would ask, do you have drive and loader arms or nothing at all? Well, they say we have drive but no loader arms. The machine's equipped for overseas with a loader lockout switch. You hit the switch with a picture of an X with a line through it, you'll have drive but no loader arm functions. Quick and easy tip, save you're out in the field, somebody touches the switch, the box is on, easy telltale sign. We can help you right on the phone or on the tech line. Emergency exits on the machine. If there was ever a case where you had to get out of the machine, you couldn't access out. Front door exit, two red levers. Turn your two red levers, the door will pop right off. Exit through the rear machine. Pull your zip tie, zip ring, pop your back window out, out through the back. The other safety function in this machine, for any reason, you had to lower the loader arms, you had no engine power or any circumstance. There's a red T-bar handle behind your left console control. Pull up on the T-bar, the faster you pull up on it, the cable is going to lower your loader arms. The faster you pull it, the faster the loader arms are going to come down. The loader arms are down, push your cable back down. Left-hand side is your inside cab filter, 250-hour service, check, inspect, replace if needed. Right-hand side, maintenance is your fuse panel and your circuit breakers. Access cover, pull your two tangs, you can pop your cover right off. Only other tip that I have inside the cab before we move on and out of the machine, simple thing, keep the glass clean for visibility. Glass cleaner, paper towels inside of the cab of your truck driving to the job site or are stored inside of the machine. Quick spray in a white front glass, rear glass side. You want to remove your glass right inside of your operation maintenance manual, which is behind your seat. You can remove your cab glass, follow the instructions, glass design between your two dots inside, push up, take your glass out, wash, reinstall, pop into place. One other thing I'd like to add, we have phone calls in the shop that I'm having a hard time closing my cab door. The reason for that is it's a pressurized cab. Crack your window open, shut your door with ease, two fingers. You're closing the door, the air pressure is coming back in. That's why they have difficulty closing the cab. Once your cab door is closed, shut your side glass, you're off and running. One other phone call we get into the shop is my machine just idled up by itself. I didn't touch any of the controls. There's a green light on on the panel. This machine is equipped with a DPF exhaust system. What the exhaust system is doing is going into a regeneration mode automatically. It senses this soot buildup in the exhaust. It burns the soot down into a vapor to burn it off. Once the machine cleans off, it'll return to an idle. The green light will go out. Let the machine just do its regen. No problems, nothing to worry about. It's normal operation of the machine. That's it inside the cab. In closing, I want to bring attention to some of the other resources available using the Scan and Learn QR code decal found on your machine. In addition to this maintenance overview, there's also a video on machine operation practices and tips. When you scan the service interval checklist QR code, you can view or download the steps and materials required for the 250, 500, and 1,000 hour maintenance intervals for your machine. And finally, our technical call line can also be accessed by scanning its QR code, which allows you to connect with a Milton Cat technical expert. Just leave a message with your question or problem and they'll get back to you promptly with an answer. This service is free to you as a Milton Cat customer. I hope that you have found this video useful, but keep in mind it's still very important to review your operation and maintenance manual as well as visiting another great resource, safety.cat.com. I have seen over and over where if you take care of your machine, it will reward you with many hours of productivity. Thanks again for choosing Cat and Milton Cat.